Hello students. Previous lecture, we discussed in detail uh, helium neon laser, krypton argon laser, molecular laser, carbon dioxide and nitrogen. Now today we will discuss excimer lasers. Excimer laser is also very important. Firstly, understand where do you get this word excimer from? See, excimer are molecules which are existing only in the excited state. So, the population of the ground state of molecules will always be zero and it will be so easy to obtain population inversion which is a necessary condition for laser action. And because of this, we will get high efficiency. Excimer lasers are a family of high pressure pulse lasers that are producing intense ultraviolet light with high efficiency and high peak power. Commonly used excimer lasers are your argon fluoride laser, your krypton fluoride laser, etc. Look at the diagram of excimer laser here. Here we are having the power supply. We are having our metal electrodes in the laser tube. Then we have a small gas circulation fan and the pre-ionization system. And the laser output beam is obtained. Now this whole structure is made up of steel. Electric discharge is going to take place in the transverse direction to obtain population inversion. This laser is a mixed with helium gas. So that mixture has a pressure of 2 to 4 atomic excitation occurs by electron dissociation and ionization of the gas molecules to produce argon, krypton or xenon ions. Excitation must be for very short time interval because of which we will be getting a very good high peak power. That is the advantage of excimer laser because excimer, as I told you earlier also, that the molecules are already in the excited state. We don't need to do anything. So they are producing short pulses of peak power 10 to 20 million watt and the repetition rates of around 1000 pulses per second. This comes as a frequency. But yes, drawback are that it is dangerous and it is it requires high voltage requirement. Risk because of danger can be because if we don't take precaution eyes can get damaged, skin can get damaged, but it is widely used in laser surgery, drilling holes and pumping in dye lasers. Okay, let's see dye lasers. Now here, what do you understand by dye laser? What are the desirable properties of dye materials? And discuss some drawbacks of dye laser. Dye, as you can very well see the word only, that here it must be the operating medium will be some liquid solution. And best part is that it because the medium here is a liquid, it can easily be turned over a broad spectral range and replacing one of its resonating mirrors with a diffraction grating. Different dyes are having different emission spectra or colors. Dye lasers cover a broad wavelength range from ultraviolet to infrared. The most common used dye is the rhodamine 6G. This emits yellow red region and the bluish green region we get from the comarine dyes. So this is a very big advantage of dye lasers because dyes easily form combinations and we get nice output beam. Here look at the diagram of dye laser. Here, because of the addition of grating, we are getting nice color combination of the output beam of laser. The characteristics of dye laser are that they have high absorption at the excited wavelength, small transition probability. Dye lasers are available to be operated. Either you can operate them as the pulse mode or the continuous wave mode. Yes, they are tunable lasers. 
four level liquid lasers. Here, organic dye is the lasing medium, operate in the visible spectrum, optically excited by another laser, and the construction and working consisting of dye. The dye solvents can be used for alcohol, toluene, benzene, etc. And optical cavity is formed by using confocal mirror arrangement. Energy level diagram for an organic dye solution uh, has two electronic sets of molecules. One is singlet and the other is the triplet. Dye lasers can be four level laser systems. Laser action takes place between vibrational sublevel and excited sublevel. Here, the energy level diagram of dye lasers, the triplet and the singlet, the intercrossing taking place. And because of all this, we get nice output of broad emission spectrum because you can see so many energy level combinations are going on here. So this gives us a very nice broad emission spectra. It is a very cheap laser, widely used, tunable in visible range, it has high gain and mode lock laser, but the drawbacks of the dye laser are that viscosity of liquid laser is also high, hence circulating motion is not feasible. The quality of dye degrades with time and you need to keep changing them. They are used in the field of spectroscopy, used to retard atoms to very slow speed, used in the study of excited states of semiconductors. They are used in the treatment of cancer. Lot of times they have asked in section A that why dye lasers are tunable? Why can you tune them? You see the answer for this is that the selected wavelengths can be altered by rotating the grating and grating behaves as a mirror with a very sharp diffraction spectra. So because of this, we can uh, tune the wavelength over uh, the visible spectra or the 500 angstrom length. Types of dye lasers are the pulsed, continuous and mode locked. Pulsed ones, output will come out in the form of pulses. Water cooling, no doubt, will be available. In continuous, output will be in the form of a continuous beam. In mode locking technique, laser pulses of very high peak power and short duration, maybe of the order of femtoseconds, will be there but their intensity will be strong.